Hey guys, good morning. Whoopsie, I wasn't ready. I hit the button and I wasn't ready. That always happens to me. Anyway, good morning, you guys. I know my hair is crazy. Marissa Myers here. I just completed my country heat workout. I've, I've, I've completed week one. I think I missed... I think I missed one workout this week, so hopefully we'll do the workout that I missed at our event today because we'll be doing country heat today. So, hey, how are you? Good morning. Um, why, do you need personal development suggestions? You all know that personal development is a huge part of my life. I did a video yesterday going over what you get when you join my 30-day online health and fitness and personal development accountability group. And I asked at the end of it what types of things you guys want to see more of on this page. And one of the questions or suggestions was personal development. So if you don't know, hey, hey Karen. So if you don't know what personal development is, um, I don't know the exact definition. Hey, Peg. But it's, it's, it's what I feel that it is, is working on yourself through personal growth in order to help, you know, to, to better yourself in order to set an example for others. For me, it's, you know, I want to have an impact in the lives of others. So it's really important for me to be always constantly working on myself because we're human. Guys, you know, we're emotional. We have something happen to us and we get emotional. It's a human response. I mean, if we weren't human, we'd be Jesus. We'd be in heaven, you know? We would, you know, we'd be God. We would have, you know, we'd be above all of the emotion of humans. But we're here on this planet and this earth, we're gonna feel emotional. So personal development to me is learning how to balance out my emotional state so that I'm more level instead of like crazy like this. You know, most women were all crazy up and down all over the place. But for me, it's, you know, balancing that emotional state out in order to inspire that in others and so that they can live a joyous, passionate, you know, fulfilling life. Because when we're going up and down all the time like that, it's really not joyful. You know, it doesn't feel good. If we're more in the center, you know, maybe we won't have as high of highs, but being more in the center, I feel, is a more joyful life because that's where I'm going towards. I'm kind of the, you know, the dips, the ebbs and flows aren't as bad, as bad as they used to be for me because let's face it, I used to be very angry. <laughs> and of course, we all have anger inside of us. You know, when we yell at, we scream at traffic or, you know, we, we, we get mad at our pets or our kids or our spouse or our friends or whatever it is and we take it out on them, but really it's inside of us and what they're doing is they're showing us that it's there. So the more we work on that emotion state, the better we get at being able to inspire others to live their most joyous, passionate, fulfilling, ma life, magical life. So um, to, I've been listening to this book called Big Magic by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Gilbert. Have you guys heard of the movie Eat, Pray, Love? Have you seen the movie Eat, Pray, Love? <laughs> she wrote that book, Eat, Pray, Love, first, and then they made it into a movie. And then she was going to write this other book that she didn't end up writing, and then she ended up writing this book called Big Magic. And I've been listening to it on audio when I walk my dog, so it doesn't have to take extra time out of my day to do my personal development. Because for me, I wake up in the morning with personal development every day, even if it's just two minutes of like telling myself that I love myself in the mirror, <laughs> you know? Even if it's just, because I was doing mirror work before this and that was taking me about 10 minutes a day. Now I'm listening to it the whole time I walk my dog, which is about a 30 minute walk. So I'll probably be done with the book by like the end of next week because it's maybe like four hours if I'm listening to it every day. And the first chapter is all about fear. Why we have fear and how we can overcome fear. And you know, we all have it. It's, it's instinctual in our human nature to have fear. Hey, Marissa. And, but what we do with it is the point. So she basically was a woman who grew up being afraid of everything, being afraid of the ocean. Yes. I haven't read that book. I'm glad you read Big Magic too, Peg. Okay, so she was afraid of so many things. Like she, one day she, or when she was a kid, she went to the ocean with her parents and she wanted to get everybody out of the water because she was so scared of the ocean. She would have felt more comfortable if everybody was sitting on their own towel on the sand. I mean, she was scared of things that people normally wouldn't even be scared of. She was a scaredy cat. And she was kind of defining herself by her fear. And then she realized that her fear was it was boring and it was, first of all, the same fear that everybody experiences and it was never anything different. Basically what her fear was always telling her was stop, 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 stop. And it was, it was totally cutting off 
all creativity and imagination in her life. So when she finally chose to move out of that, first of all, she had a mother who didn't, you know, didn't buy into her fear, but basically would make her go do the thing that she was scared of, which I think is incredible because then she got, she overcame her fear having that strong, powerful mother that she had from what it sounds like. And that could have been part of the reason why she became so like that because she was trying to reject, you know, fight against her mother who was, you know, such a strong, like, you know, woman. Maybe she was trying to be the opposite or whatever of her mom. Anyway, regardless, she ended up overcoming that fear and she's just living, I mean, supposedly from the book, she's living a more joyous and passionate and compassionate and, you know, life that's full of magic. And, 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 the, and the whole chapter on fear is just basically what often we try to do is we try to become fearless. We try to, you know, push our fear away and fight against it. But when we do that, we actually welcome more of it into our lives. And that's fully what I believe about any emotional state. The more we just push it away or shove it under the rug or don't allow ourselves to feel it or allow it to be okay, the more we actually fight against it and the more it's going to show up for us because we're sticking it into like a dark place, into our shadow self and we're hiding it. We end up hiding it even from ourself. So the work that I've been doing is it's called shadow work. That's the work that I've been doing with the conscious healer for the last two years. And it's uncovering this, this little, you know, little person that I put here that I've hidden even from myself because I was embarrassed about being emotional or being angry or whatever that those emotional states were. I had shoved them so deep down inside. I didn't even know that they were there and they were coming out in me, but I wasn't even paying attention to notice that I was reacting in that way until it was too late. And then I was having all these conflicts and, you know, I wasn't happy in my life. I wasn't experiencing joy. I was experiencing a lot of depression and a lot of anger, which really are the same thing. Sadness is just anger turned inwards. So anyway, she's talking about fear and she's saying, it's not that we need to be fearless. We just need to understand and accept that fear is going to be a part of our life. And creativity and fear, she says, are conjoined twins. So when you're starting to use your imagination and your creativity, of course, fear is going to come in because fear is ego and it's afraid of the unknown. So it's going to fight against whatever is the unknown. And when you're using your creativity and imagination, it's something that you've never experienced before. So what she does is she actually says, she talks to fear and she welcomes it in and she says, creativity and I are going on this adventure and I know that you're going to be here fear, but I'm not going to let you drive my car. So basically I'm not going to respond in a way out of you, out of that emotional state, out of fear. I'm going to respond to everything out of the emotional state, you know, of creativity and inspiration, which I don't know if that's an emotional state, but I loved it. I thought it was amazing. So that was the first chapter. Now I'm on to the second chapter and she starts sharing with me about, or sharing with, with the readers because the author is actually reading the book when you buy the book on Audible. She shares a story about how she had this idea of a book, a book idea, and she ended up meeting this woman and they became friends. They, they met at a library, a library convention or something. I forget what it was, but they ended up becoming friends. And what, the craziest thing happened, like her book idea ended up, she didn't end up writing it. She had started to write it and then she kind of got distracted with other things in her personal life and she didn't, she kind of gave up on that idea. And this other woman that she met ended up writing almost the exact same idea. And it was like a super specific idea. I'll go into it maybe more tomorrow because I don't want to make this video super long. But literally when I read that part, do chills. Like I felt the big magic. Like I felt it in my body. I felt the chills going up. You know, I got goosebumps. It was amazing. It was just incredible to think that an idea is really, it is just energy. It's just our thoughts. It's a, th it's a thought. And basically what she says is like ideas swirl around in the universe waiting for a human to come along. That's an open vessel for the idea to plant itself in so it can come to fruition and turn into an actual physical form. And her idea, she basically sat on it for so long that it went away from her. And she, basically right around the same time as she met this woman at this library conference, this woman ended up having this idea for this book. I mean, now that is like amazingly inspirational. I mean, instead of thinking that this book, this woman stole the book from her, she was like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know, she was so happy for her. So a lot of times we think that things are being taken from us, but that's a scarcity mentality. So when we live in abundance, more things show up. So that was pretty much like the, you know, the, um, 
let's see, overview of like the first chapter and then a little bit into the second chapter. But I'll do a live video tomorrow on the second chapter um, because I'm probably gonna listen to it again because I like literally was with goosebumps with that story. And I'll get more clear on what the story was about so I can um, portray that to you. Um, you guys, do you have anything specific you guys wanna see from me on my page since you're on here? Marissa, Karen, Peg, is there anything you wanna see more of? Because I really just wanna keep adding value on this page. And what better way to know what value to add than to ask people who are actually watching my videos? Um, because there's not always that many watching my, my live videos. So if you guys have suggestions, um, I'd love to hear them. And I'll do a workout recap later. Uh, I'm, I'm still doing country heat. It's like this country dancing to country music. And you know, I don't know if you can see, you can't, probably can't see it, but I am sweating. And I don't, like it truly, I don't feel like I'm working out because it's just, I mean, the moves are really so simple. It's like anyone could really get these moves down. And um, it's on sale this month too. So if anybody is interested in, you know, it's not hard. It's not like it's a hard, like crazy hard workout. It's, you know, it's easy. Anyone could do it. So I think you share a lot and I appreciate it. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I'm open to hearing from you guys. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, or just you know comment on comment on the things that you like and be like yes share more of this so I know what you know what you guys are liking so I can keep adding value to you I just want everyone to live an inspired life because I feel like I was for so many years I was like this zombie that like I my switch was turned off you know if you guys know what that that what I'm talking about like I was like a robot that was walking around with like my switch was off and I was just in like robot mode for so many years and I'm still so young. I'm 36 years old, you know, <laughs> I'm walking around like a robot already. Like that's crazy. And I feel like when I, I shifted out of a relationship that really wasn't serving me because I was in it for five years, just struggling and struggling and struggling and unhappy and we were fighting and it was miserable. And I stumbled upon this conscious healer and it just opened my eyes to this new world of you know, emotional stability. And life doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't, you don't have to be like fighting with someone to feel alive. You can feel alive by just being out in nature and watching the waves or, you know, taking your dog for a walk or spending time with your bird or whatever it is. And I feel like it just, it inspired this whole new, it, it turned my switch on. <laughs> and I just want everyone to feel like that because I think a lot of people are walking around not even knowing that they're a robot with their switch turned off. They don't even know how they feel most of the time. I mean, most of us don't, like, unless we're spending time and really searching within ourselves to bring awareness around our feelings, then we're just walking around like zombies, not feeling anything. So my goal is to wake up the zombie nation <laughs> and expose more people to personal growth um, through whatever the modality that works for them. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'm going to go off to my event now in Boca Black Box and host some amazing people that are going to come listen to my conscious healer speak for an hour and help them, um, you know, push past their limiting beliefs and hopefully inspire some people to want to move farther than where they are right now. Bye guys. Have a good day.